Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, it's great to be back with everybody and Michelle Fabrica. How are you doing? Good. Good to be here with you both. Michelle, uh, the title is, Are You a People Pleaser? Now, I have a question for you. I kind of know what a people pleaser is. Is that good or bad to be a people pleaser? I always thought it was a yeah. good thing. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um, well, I would say generally the, the way I'm going to talk about it is it, it, it seems like it's a good thing, but it kind of can backfire. And it's not really ultimately going to bring you um, like satisfaction and joy in your life and, and not in your relationships either. Right. So, um, you know, basically what I mean is that a person who is a piece of people pleaser, and, and these are kind of some of the actions or activities that this person behaviors, this person might do is they tend to avoid conflict and um, they're uncomfortable around other people's anger. They're, they feel responsible for other people's feelings. They have trouble saying no. They tend to be really solicitous and, um, you know, oh, how can I help you with that? And just, you know, kind of um, basically overgive, essentially. And um, maybe they'll withhold their feelings when they're hurt. And they feel burdened by all the things they have to do and, and probably apologize often. <laughs> so that's kind of like the, the quick list of, of different behaviors, but it's not really a recipe for uh, being happy, I would say. Yeah, to me, they say so uh, uh, a people pleaser generally comes off as being a phony and uh, just saying things that <laughs> uh, you want to uh, think make you feel good about yourself, but they do it in such a way that it's uh, more gratuitous. So the real question is, is for the people pleaser, is there some way for them to recognize it and work on it? Or on the other side, if you're being people pleased, uh, how do you either correct that person or ignore them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. So you, you, I think you hit it. Basically, um, you know, it's not the same thing as being kind. So I really want to make that distinction because we think, I think people who are people pleasers tend to think they're they have to be kind and, and paying attention to everybody and, and meet other people's needs. It generally comes from, um, in most situations, it's it's kind of comes from a lack of self-worth. So something in their history, you know, growing up, whatever, that was a strategy they, they started to, strategy they started to use to basically get along better with other people or to diffuse maybe a parent's anger or um, just kind of hide a little bit from difficult circumstances. The best way to do it was to make sure that they were attending to everybody else's needs. And so it's kind of can be a lifelong habit and it's not something that um, obviously serves them. And it's something that, you know, probably needs some, some attention. And um, uh, yeah. So, I mean, one of the things to do is to really notice for yourself, if you think this is true for you is to really start really small and notice like, gee, is there something I'm doing now, like maybe say no to a request that somebody makes of you or to even pause before you say yes or no and like think, do I, I really want to do this or am I just doing it out of habit or because that person expects me to do it? Because part of the problem with being a people pleaser is that then others tend, can sometimes take advantage of you because essentially we treat, uh, sorry, the way we um, act, interact with others in the world, we're teaching people how to treat us. So if we're putting up with, you know, lots of requests and expectations and uh, from others, then we're basically telling other people we're fine with this. And so the idea is to really develop your own, you know, uh, sense of, wow, what, what's important to me? Like to put your needs first and to, and put some boundaries around that. Uh, Michelle, do people please, I'm thinking specifically of a guy I used to know who looking back on it was probably a people pleaser, but do people pleasers tend to find themselves as victims? Because that's what this guy did. He would, he would go out of his way to help other people be nice to everybody. And then he would turn around and say, why me there? I don't get this. And I, everybody's, you know, yeah. Yeah. I think they do can go hand in hand. And I mean, in a way you're kind of setting yourself up for, you know, being at the effect of other people, 
right? And so I think you're right. You can end up being a victim. And then you're kind of like, I don't like what's going on. This is not working for me. But they don't realize that they inadvertently or maybe not consciously caused these kinds of interactions to happen to them. So, and, and it's not like I want to be, you know, in the blame the victim stance here, but it's sort of like, it's, it's time to take some attention for oneself and see what, what changes could be made, you know, and oftentimes you might need a coach or counselor or therapist really to, to work on some of these things to see how you can be different with other people and, you know, value yourself first, because it's not selfish to put your needs first. But a people pleaser thinks that maybe they've been shamed for being, you know, being selfish or how can you be, you know, so, un, you know, uncaring of other people. And it's like, you know, they've internalized that too strongly and that, you know, yeah, we need to be sensitive to other people. But we also make, you know, we need to put ourselves first. It's important. Mm, sure. Sure. Um, I, I love the way you pointed out that uh, being a people pleaser is not the same as kindness. Um, I think that's important, you know, that you don't have to uh, do favors for everybody right, to, uh, right. to be kind. Right, right. And I think a people pleaser tends to give to get, like they, they do something because they want that person to like them or they, they do something so they don't want that, so that person isn't angry at them rather than giving in the spirit of just right. genuinely, genuinely feeling generous and wanting to help someone feel better right and kindness is I'm, I'm all for kindness kindness is a great thing but when we do that at the expense of ourselves it's not kind anymore it's not kind to ourselves so we also yeah. deserve kindness but based from ourselves in the way we treat ourselves in the way we speak to ourselves i mean a lot of us uh myself included many of us say mean things to ourselves all the time right that's if, right. we're not i'm getting off track here but but you know it's important to be kind to ourselves too. And a people pleaser is generally not being kind to themselves. Yeah. Well, I, I have to say that uh, you are kind to us and our audience. And quite frankly, I would venture to say that you are quite the crowd pleaser. You please <laughs> us every time you come on and you're terrific. Uh, it's, always, it's always a joy to speak to you. We feel well taken You're so sweet, of. Art. Oh my gosh, that's so sweet. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, oh my God, yeah. I think this one is, um, it's confusing because people think that it can be a good thing or they don't know how to change it. But, um, and, and if you know someone who's like this, I mean, you mentioned this earlier, John, I didn't, let me circle back to what you suggested. You can help someone with it. Like, gee, you know, I, I didn't really need you to do that. And it kind of makes me feel uncomfortable that you want to, give this to me or do this for me. And, um, you know, I don't know. Is it, is that a good idea for you? How does it work for you to do that? You know, you can kind of like see if this is someone close to you, right? You maybe not wouldn't, wouldn't want to do this with a stranger. You don't know well, but you know, to kind of support them in that. Um, and, um, yeah, but, but mainly I would say that it, it it's going to take some work for the person to decide really for themselves and to get the support they need to, um, Make some of these changes, you know, um, small changes um, can yeah. grow into, yeah. I, I, I think, Michelle, just based on my one experience with this one person, um, the professional help, quite frankly, would be the best thing. Um, and and I've, got a, maybe, yeah. I've got a topic for us for another uh, discussion, and that is that this guy w would in his victimhood, you know, he was so mm -hmm. nice to everybody, he would do anything for everybody, bend over backwards at his own expense, and then he'd complain about it. Then, he'd be, then he mm -hmm. was a victim. I didn't do that to everybody, right. but because right. I was right. a friend, a quote friend, I would get the victimhood side of, of it all, you know, right. And right. whining and the complaining about it. I was so good to this person and they treated me like crap. Um, and I, I it, it begged for advice. Well, you know, don't do this anymore. Why don't you do that? Mm -hmm. And there was never, he never listened to any advice. Simple, try this, try yeah. that. That's another discussion. What do you do with right, people right. who ask for advice and don't really want advice? They don't want to change. Yeah. That, but that's yeah. another discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another yeah. Discussion. I mean, I think, you know, advice can be tricky, but if, if he actually came to you with that and, um, and yet wasn't able to take it in, it was almost like he was missing the, 
the awareness that his behavior led to his being, you know, complaining, you know, and to being upset sure. about something. So, sure. yeah, yeah. Anyway, people pleasing, I have a new perspective on it. So I, I appreciate that. I can see uh, it's a complicated subject. It's, and and it's, I, not I always, hope, it's not always very pleasant. Right. And I hope the people right. uh, who watch, who are people pleasers, uh, recognize themselves and get something out of it. And cut it out. Yeah. Oh, cut it out. Yeah. Well, I think it, <laughs> and, and it, comes, it can come around in relationships. Like, I mean, frankly, I would say that women, you know, of a certain generation, a lot of women were raised to be people pleasers and to attend to others and everything. And so sometimes in a long-term relationship, that pattern gets kind of solidified. And so maybe suddenly you're noticing you don't want to do that anymore. Or maybe you're suddenly on your own again, and yet you still have this patterning of being a people pleaser because that's what worked in your long-term marriage, whatever. But it's like there's there's ways to change that. There's ways to get support to learn to be different so that you can be pleasing yourself too. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. This has been great. Look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.